Today we're looking at a portable 15.6 inch touchscreen monitor from Ymaxit. Now it's the beginning of the summer almost and that means we're going to be out and about, we're going to be traveling, we're going to be in coffee shops, we're going to be all over the place. And something like this will allow you to increase your productivity as well as your play. So let's jump into this. Thank you to Ymaxit for sending this out for review. As always, let's jump into our honest, consumer friendly, transparent review. And this is the Ymaxit M1560CT3 model version. So this is not the version that is on Amazon. This one comes directly from their website. And this is a 15.6 inch touchscreen IPS panel, which is 1980 by, uh, which is 1920 by 1080 or HD. It comes inside the box with a screen protector. Now this is not a tempered glass screen protector, it's just a normal scratch resistant protector, but also comes with the um, power supply. And this is, I believe a five volt, two amp, um, read the book because the book does help you with setting up your touchscreen on your Windows PC or your Apple PC. Um, inside the box also you're going to get this little card here which allows you to reach out to their support. So that way if you have any issues with the touchscreen you can reach out to them directly. Type A to type USB-C. Now this is for plugging into a Windows based PC um, for powering the um, monitor and then here's a USB-C to USB-C cable as well. You're also going to get a mini HDMI to HDMI. So I want to make sure that you understand on this particular version, it is a mini HDMI to HDMI that comes along with it. And the mini HDMI is the side that goes into this monitor. So that means if you need a longer cable, you'll have to buy one because it's not a standard HDMI input into this particular monitor. It is the mini HDMI. So that's a big uh, difference. The monitor comes with this included leather case which wraps around it to protect the screen, especially when traveling with it. On one side you have the power button, you have a toggle switch that acts as a menu and a switch, as well as a 3.5 headphone input. This allows you to connect your headphones to it. On the opposite side you have an OTG port which is basically for connecting peripherals. Then you have USB-C, two of those ports, and then the HDMI uh, port. And that's again, that's a mini HDMI port for connecting the monitor to your source, whether it's a laptop or gaming system. The monitor also has a standard VESA pattern in case you wanna mount this on a monitor arm or on a wall. Now, one of the main reasons to buy one of these, of course, is the extreme portability. Having a monitor like this allows you to set this on your setup as an extra monitor um, for your main PC but it also allows you to travel. It allows you to take this along with you and to, uh, use it for different purposes, whether it's work or play. Um, take a look at this screen as I'm pulling off the plastic here because you can see the light shining directly on it as it has a matte screen. In its simplest form, it's really good for on the go, just plugging your cell phone in, super simple. Um, you can use a USB-C to USB-C cable for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, keep in mind, most cell phones won't be able to supply enough power, which is five volts, two amps, in order to power this. So in this uh, situation, I have it plugged in um, with a battery bank, but it does a great job. I'm using it for OneNote, for typing some notes, as well as browsing on the internet with no problem. When connecting it to my laptop, this is my MacBook uh, M3 Pro, um, you have to, there's a few things to pay attention to in this situation. In order to use it as a touch screen, you have to make the monitor the primary screen. Once it's your primary screen, then you have the touch functions. It basically will add it kind of like a touchpad for Mac OS. Now, when it's connected in this way, you're getting the full utility of the monitor, of the uh, portable monitor. I'm using it for browsing and productivity, switching between screens. I got things going on on one side. Uh, I'm, on this particular scene here, I'm working through Canva. Now, regarding the accuracy or color accuracy, it's obviously it's not as accurate as my MacBook, but it's gonna be a standard, right? Meaning that it's gonna look like most laptops or most screens look like that people are gonna be viewing these thumbnails for. So I don't think it's a big deal to edit or, or, or create an, a, a thumbnail on this particular screen. Obviously the MacBook Pro screen is gonna be a lot better because of the color accuracy, but when on the go, this is giving you a second screen to work from. And I was just basically showing here how you can use the touch functions, which you won't be able to use on the MacBook because everybody knows there's no damn touch functions on Mac. I don't know when they're going to fix that. And if you're having trouble with touch function, make sure you have something powering the monitor, USB-C to USB-C into your MacBook and HDMI carrying the video signal and you'll be good. This is a productivity monitor, meaning it's not really designed for gaming. 
And you can tell that because it's 1080p and two is capped at 60 hertz, but that doesn't mean you cannot game on it. There are a few caveats when gaming on it, but let's jump into that so that way you have all the information in case you were looking at this as a travel monitor for gaming on the go. For whatever reason, this monitor wouldn't plug in directly to my Ally using just the USB-C cable. So what I had to do was connect it to my JSO or, uh, HDMI dock and then connect it that way. Once I did that, then I was able to use my Ally on this monitor, but by itself, it won't connect directly. So I don't know if it's a limitation of this particular model as there is a newer version and um, I'll send them an email and ask, but it didn't pick up the Ally via USB-C at all. And because the Ally can't naturally connect via HDMI, I couldn't use it that way. And so what I did was use my dock and then I was able to do it fine. Now, Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox, PS5, all connecting via HDMI dock, HDMI will be just fine. Just for this specific use case, I could not do it. One relief is that even though it's not connecting directly to the Rogue Ally, you still get the touch screen. So you can still, as long as you make this your primary monitor um, in the multiple monitor setup, you still get the touch settings. And so that's a real big plus because you can still use all of those features on this. Now, the way that this looks or the screen, right? And I mean like the color, um, et cetera, is interesting because this monitor doesn't have HDR. And I mentioned that earlier or it's not advertised to have HDR, but inside the menu settings, there is HDR and you can oversaturate, undersaturate, adjust colors, contrast, etc. The menu is very, I would say basic, um, but there's almost three sections that allow you to adjust this. Like there's the picture setting where you can just go through standard picture profiles, right? Standard game, movie, vivid, user, blah, blah, blah. There's also RGB settings where you can go in and actually adjust RGB. And I think 2084 is the RGB profile that it has set on here, which is interesting because HDR is not advertised for this particular monitor. And that may be an oversight or, you know, a, a standard image that was, you know, added to this particular uh, monitor, but it's there. So there's HDR settings and then there's color temperature settings that you can also adjust sRGB. Um, you can also adjust it by Kelvin scale. So 5,600, blah, 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 blah. It's so it's super interesting. And then once you turn off HDR, I had on HDR at first, but when you turn off HDR, then the actual, actual picture profiles seem to do a lot more um, than what they do when the HDR is turned on. So I think that's interesting, um, which basically means depending on your use case, you'll have to adjust it um, to your liking. This overall is a pretty good monitor. Now the price is on their website is listed at $199. However, I wouldn't buy this one. I would buy the newer one that's listed on Amazon. The one on Amazon is $169.99 and it has $10 off. Now, with that being said, overall, this monitor is really good. For productivity, I think it's perfect. I think at 1080p at a 60 hertz refresh rate, that's good enough for spreadsheets, PowerPoints, um, web browsing, Netflix streaming, YouTube watching, etc. because the colors and everything look great on there and it runs smooth and sharp and it looks like a really great uh, picture. And as far as gaming, I think gaming is okay too with the caveat that you gotta do a few things to get it gaming if you're gonna use your Rogue Ally, but anything that is HDMI uh, specific, like a Switch or a PS5, PS4, et cetera, you can use that easily, Xbox, whatever, you can use that easily, but again, it's capped at 1080p 60 hertz, which when gaming on the go is not a bad deal. If you're carrying this around with like a Xbox Series S, right, you get, you get streaming, um, Game Pass and all that good stuff, you got a monster of a setup there. Then you can connect a keyboard and mouse uh, using you know a dock or something like that 
Overall, it's a really good monitor in that respect. This one on the website at 199 might be a little steep unless you really need that touchscreen. Now, going over to the one on Amazon at 169 with the $10 off, touchscreen and everything else included, and maybe a little bit more functionality. I don't know, they didn't send me out their newer one. Um, I'd be interested to see what their newest one um, has to offer. They even have a 14 inch touchscreen that is 240 bucks and it has, it's, it's almost three times as bright, et cetera. So a lot more features on that one, but I don't know. But overall, this particular one is pretty good for a travel setup, for a productivity setup, for adding an extra screen to your main setup. I think it's good for all those particular things. So if you ask me, is it worth 199? Probably not, but 169 with $10 off on Amazon. I think it's worth that. Let me know your thoughts about today's video in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed today's content, consider taking a look at this playlist right here for more content just like it. And also consider joining the Cozy Coalition and hitting that subscribe button below. But as always, stay cozy in that crazy world, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.